Hey guys, Tim's on. Hey Tim, Tim, yeah, yeah, right here. The ESA and NASA can't seem to convincingly fake space. All the billions stolen from the American and European people uh, cannot seem to produce anything that seems realistic. Are you just test piloting systems and have yet to find a way that is foolproof that will convince the American and European people that you're actually in space? Everything we do up here, it's cutting edge technology. We're developing new systems, we're new, using new materials, we're coming up with new techniques. And in order to improve and to move forward, it's good to have that kind of test pilot mentality. Uh, Tim, uh, watching some of your clips, though, on the ISS, you seem to be pretty horrible at deceiving people. Are you doing anything to correct that situation? <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another week. Praise the Lord. Mike here, of course. I'm going to show you in this video how NASA fakes zero-G without a vomit comet or a zero-G plane. Now, I've heard a lot of theories from other flat earthers of some big energy fieldy, sound wavy uh, thing that pushes matter up in the air through sheer energy. But, uh, but to be honest, <laughs> some of the theories did sound like two healthy choices to me. No, I've been praying about it, and the Lord finally revealed to me uh, one video, and I work with Blender and Unity, and I've been working with special effects software in Photoshop for quite a while now. And when I saw this video, I realized it became instantly clear how they do it. And it's just video game technology. Now, if you're part of the geek squad or the techie crowd, well, then you have uh, you already know about this technology. And, and so let's get to the video that caught my attention, and you will see the same things that I saw. Let's watch. We have to introduce the concept of free fall. So let's use this model of the Earth. And let's enlist the help of a friend, Taxi. You might know her. So, what is significant about this video is number one, it was live to school children. Number two, we have this stuffed animal that is transitioning in on another video channel. And the actor is able to reach up and grab this doll in real 3D space and manipulate this doll with their hands. And so the only way you're going to pull that off is with one technology. And that technology is virtual reality. More importantly, though, something called augmented virtual reality. Now, before 2012, NASA used masking techniques, like much like we do in Photoshop and After Effects, um, but now we're able to simulate water and objects live in real 3D space. So we're able to take models of things that are photorealistic and rotate and move them while we are going live. Um, before, we used to have to render these effects frame by frame by frame, and it took extremely long amounts of time. In this video here uh, I made last year, I'm using Sony Vegas, and I was just playing around with the uh, masking capabilities of Sony Vegas. I don't even know why I saved this video, but here I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm just lifting up this trash can to make it kind of look like it's floating. And I didn't do a lot of work on this. I, it was just something I wanted to see real quick. But that is a masking effect to get another effect. We now have the technology to simulate water, uh, materials, fabrics live in real 3D space with virtual reality but better yet, augmented virtual reality. And all augmented virtual reality is, is taking the objects in 3D space from a virtual reality world and putting them in our world on another screen, which we can see, manipulate, and touch with virtual reality contacts or glasses. In this next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. Yes, live. And do it all in real time. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to them as they're grabbing objects and manipulating them. And then I'm going to show you Microsoft's Holosense video, uh, their demonstration at E3 a couple years ago, of bringing a virtual reality 
into our world. And it is simply amazing. Let's watch. Specifically how HoloLens can turn every room of your house into a personalized video game level. But today, we want to take mixed reality one step further. So we've got something new to show you. Holograms you can hold. This holographic gauntlet is the weapon that Dan will be using while playing Project X-Ray. You'll notice that as he moves his arm, the hologram moves as well. This is a wearable hologram. And when you combine technology like this with the environment understanding of HoloLens, you can do some pretty spectacular things. And can even use his shield to defend himself. Nicely done. Looks like that's all of them. In 2012, NASA got tired of faking weightlessness by using the zero-g plane, better known as the Vomit Comet. So in 2012, they started soliciting companies that specialize in real-time augmented virtual reality so that they can fake weightlessness and floating objects in the air in real time. Uh, simply the cost of the plane and the safety concerns and the fact that they weren't very good at it. They didn't go to Hollywood, which most of Hollywood's effects are post-processing. That's after the video is made. They needed something they can do in real time and make it look realistic. And so I'll put this link in the description. They found a company called Telemetrics. Thank you, Debbie Durant, for uh, bringing this to my attention. After I researched this, lo and behold, I found out uh, our government has a contract with these people. And Telemetrics basically what they do is they help news teams and they bring um, broadcast together in real time and they're able to create sets, cities, anything you want in a virtual reality world and make it look absolutely 100% real. They're also able to bring different people from around the world, put them in the same room and broadcast live, and give them desks, whatever they need to make the broadcast. So it's a pretty amazing company. Um, here we see Johnson Space Center Telemetrics provided latest camera robotics technology to NASA's government television at Mission Control. Why do you need to fake virtual reality sets at Mission Control and Johnson Space Center? I think we know the answer to that when we saw Tim Peek on the gridded blue screen. So this next segment, I'm going to show you what it looks like when virtual reality being broadcast live doesn't work out so well because the system's not perfect. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you the mother of all screw-ups when they actually uh, have a channel shut off that should be on. Because once again, these astronauts are looking in 3D space. They are grabbing objects because they're wearing argumented contact lenses. And if that object's not there broadcast to the viewers live, then it's going to look pretty ridiculous. So let's see some of NASA screw ups. I'll cover them as they happen and then we'll move on to the final. Okay, so this is one of NASA's older videos where they use post processing and, they, and masks. This is a video layer mask in augmented virtual reality. Um, we're going to see him lose his finger here. The watch glitches out. So I guess uh, virtual reality accidents can cause loss of fingers. In this next video, we have uh, Caddy. Now I want you to pay attention to her neck and the way her neckline goes in her shirt. It's cut off. And the necklace. Uh, apparently they wanted to show how cool this necklace looked. Unfortunately, it's not perfect. The necklace goes in and out of her shirt unnaturally. And uh, her neck glitches in several places. I literally spent hours going after probably 30 or 40 videos, probably had approximately, oh, 45 minutes straight of NASA messing up the virtual reality setup. I tried to pick some clips that were obvious and some not so obvious, uh, show you some of the contacts. We're going to see um, Tim Peake with his contacts in, but these are virtual reality contacts overlaid on the eye so actors can interact with things in 3D space all in real time. In this next shot, we will get to see the whole arm set up and the virtual reality glove that covers all the way down the arm and hand. This allows the software to broadcast what we see video-wise as his arm in a shirt sleeve. Okay, I have a lot of Tim Peake screw-ups, but this one here, the system glitches. The software does not track his hand properly, and Tim slips his hand underneath 
his other fingers, which is tightly holding onto the mic, which would be impossible. Um, I don't think this is Tim's fault. Normally, Tim always moves his other fingers up while he slides his hand under. I just think the uh, system didn't respond to his movements here. Uh, this picture here is actually Tim's fault. His hand uh, breaches the 3D mic floating in front of him. In this next clip, we're going to see Tim's arms glitch out as he's manipulating a 3D bubble. Now, this bubble can be done in real time now. We have the technology to do that, which I showed you at the beginning of this. And this bubble is environmentally lit, or HDRI lit, by its environment, which means the bubble can take up its reflections and refractions as it moves around in 3D space, in Tim's augmented uh, reality. Once again, augmented VR just means bringing the 3D objects into our world on a separate monitor. In this last clip, we're going to see NASA royally screw up. It's a live broadcast, and one of their video channels is off, not working. That's the channel that is supposed to show us, the public, what the astronauts are seeing in virtual reality. Also, the channel shut off is the masking for the guy on the wires in the background. You can't make this stuff up. Just watch. We all know NASA uses wires, and sometimes we'll catch them like this here. The guy pulled on his wire. However, some days when you're filming live, things just don't work out, and it becomes so blatantly obvious, it's ridiculous. So, in this clip, they're talking, live feed, and what you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station, busy effect. The only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. Okay, so... You see to the right, this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's, they're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him. But the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see. And so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. Oh, oh, hey, Tim. Tim, you still there? Yeah. Um, can you explain to us what this astronaut's going through as he sees something with his eyes in 3D space, but it's not actually there being broadcast to the public? What, what's going through this astronaut's mind? This system is sending signals to the brain um, that don't, doesn't really match your eyes, and so your brain's trying to work out the two differences. Here's the thing. Uh, as much fun as this was, there is a time coming when you and I will not be able to tell the difference. And space has not changed. Uh, technology to fake space has gotten better. Just because Adobe gets a massive update to Photoshop or After Effects or there's a massive update at Telemetrics and their virtual reality, augmented virtual reality programming, that does not advance us magically 20 years in space. Space has not changed. It's flat. It's above us. It's dimensional, and we cannot orbit Earth. You have been warned. Um, this is very serious stuff, and if you do not get it now, you won't get it later, because later you won't know the difference. This is Mike. God bless everybody. Uh, please like and please subscribe.